Hello, I'm Ho Suk Wan, Technical Marketing Engineer, part of the Enterprise Networking and Cloud team within Cisco. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure ICE repository with Amazon Web Services S3 bucket. As many of you are aware, ICE 3.1 is the first version that you can install natively on AWS, and as such, you may want to utilize S3 for ICE repository. ICE repository is used across many operations in ICE, such as upgrade, patching, backup and restore, large reports, packet captures, troubleshooting files, and more. Although ICE supports HTTPS protocol for repository, which S3 supports natively, ICE cannot use HTTPS to upload files, which is required for many ICE operations. So we'll be using AWS Transfer Family Service, which provides SFTP gateway to the S3 bucket. Please note that there is some additional cost to run the AWS Transfer Family Service. At a high level, we'll be creating a S3 bucket, if not already present. Then we'll create AWS Identity and Access Management role to access the AWS transfer to S3. Then we'll create the SFTP transfer and also create a user with that role created above that will have access to the transfer. After that, we'll make sure ICE can talk to the SFTP transfer using SSH key. Please note that the SFTP transfer family only supports the use of key to authenticate instead of username and password. And I'll show you how to do this. Okay, let's get started. So if you're not already on the S3 console, go to services, select storage and S3. And select create bucket and name it something that you can remember. Here I'm going to name it ice repository. And you can leave these settings as is and select create bucket. Okay, next is going to be creating the roles. So you can go to services, scroll down to security, identity, and compliance, and select IAM. And here, select roles on the left side, and select create role. Under use cases, select S3, and select S3 again, and select permissions. Under permissions or per policies, select uh, or search S3 and provide the Amazon S3 full access. Select next, next, and provide a name. Here I'm going to name it ICE SFTP and create the role. Okay, there's a one modification that you need to make. So search for the, the role that we just created and select it. And under trust relationship, we're going to edit it. And instead of service being S3, we're going to change it to transfer and update trust policy. Okay, next we're going to configure the actual transfer family. So go to services, scroll down to migration and transfer and select AWS transfer family. Okay, here we're going to create a server and we're going to use the SFTP and select next. We're going to have the usernames created within the SFTP service itself, so we can leave it as default. Select next. We're going to make it VPC hosted and we're only going to allow from the internal hosts and select the VPC that you have ICE instances in. And you can select multiple subnets if you have uh, ICE in multiple subnets, but here we're going to select two <coughs> subnets that have ICE instances in. And this will give you some redundancy in case one of the zones goes down. And here select the security group that will allow access to the SFTP. So here I'm going to select the ICE demo and uncheck the other one and select next. I'm going to use the S3 bucket that we have created. So I'm going to select S3. And as you can leave the uh, other details as it is. And select create. And the create server. So here we have no users. So we're going to add a user. So select the service, select add user and provide a name. 
So let's name it SFTP user and the role that we have created. So, and the home directory is going to be the bucket that we have created. So ice repository and let's just leave the home directory because we want to just save it in the repository root. And we need the SSH public key from ICE. So here's where you have to log into the ICE. So open up a new tab and go to ICE. That's running on AWS. Go to the menu, go to administration, maintenance, and here's setting for the repository. And here we're going to generate key pairs. So provide a password that's longer than 13 characters. And save it. Okay, now that we have created a key pair, we're going to export the public key. Save file. Okay, so here's the file I have just downloaded. So I'm going to copy this the public key content and go back to the AWS console and paste it into the SSH public key. And then select add. Okay, now make sure to note the two IP addresses that's been created for each of the subnets. And we're going to add these into the ICE as the SFTP repository. Okay, so select add. The user that you created. And since you're using the, the keys, you can just select the PKI. And as far as the path, you need to provide the actual uh, S3 bucket name. So you'll type in ice. And you can give it a name. This is repo1. And then submit. And notice of the warning that says we need to go to CLI and then run this crypto host key add command. We'll do that in a little bit. Let's add the secondary repository. Okay, let's go back to the, the AWS console and here's the IP address for the second subnet. Pass is going to be again the repository name. And select submit. Oops. And select submit again. Okay, so we have two SFTP repository configured, one for each of the IP address in the subnets. Uh, one last thing that we need to do before you can use this is we need to go to the CLI of ICE and add each of the server hosts. Okay, once you're there, type in crypto host key add host and type in each of the IP address that the SFTP service is running on. Okay, it'll add one and then the other. Okay, so both servers are now trusted and now we'll be able to use both repository for backup and restore as well as other services that require the repository. Okay, so let's do a quick backup. And uh, since we don't have any data on this, it will be much faster to do a operational data backup. Okay, name it. And let's select uh, repo one and make a backup. Okay, so as you can see, 
I fast forwarded the video since I don't want you to wait for the backup to complete. But it shows the it was success. And if I scroll down and select repo one and select operational, you can see the files in the repository now. And we can also confirm within the AWS console. So let's go back to services, the S3. and go to the ICE repository. And now we can see the file also present on the AWS console. So as you can see, ICE repository with S3 is an easy way to make use of for multiple purposes without having to bring a separate server for ICE repository purpose. So with that, thank you. And this concludes how to configure AWS S3 for Cisco ICE repository.